occult brotherhoods. Ellipsis. What we mean by the designation occult brotherhoods is very complex. However, this complex entity rests upon a foundation that educates people in a certain direction. It unites them in a kind of ritual whereby certain symbols are transmitted. People are united, as it were, in a kind of ritual containing certain symbols. Today many people take the significance of the ceremonies and symbolic matters connected with occult brotherhoods very light-heartedly. They tend to dismiss them as a laughing matter. However, some people, Goethe, for example, attach a great deal of importance to the fact that something quite Something special quite definitely exists in such ceremonial situations. Goethe knew this very well and often expressed it in different ways. He was grateful, in fact, that he did not go through a normal school system but received his education only later through his connection with certain orders. Since the beginning of the 15th century, we have lived in the 5th post-Atlantean period. This was preceded by the fourth post-Atlantean period which started in 747 BCE and ended in 1413 CE. During this period people were so organized that the etheric body was much more receptive than it has been since the 15th century. Earlier the etheric body could see much more of what was around it. Now, when the etheric body perceives it sees the elementary or elemental world. This is the world of elemental beings in plants, animals, and minerals. People in the previous epochs were still able to speak of these, of the kabis and gnomes to be seen in the mountains and approached in certain mines. When ordinary people hear about this today, they think the people of earlier times were just being poetical but it was not poetical to the people of those centuries. They still knew something about the presence of an elementary world behind the physical world. You can see from historical documents that people in past ages possessed a different sort of perception. For example, there is a painting in the Hamburg Museum depicting the first chapter of Genesis, the fall into sin, the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Now, we know from our studies that the tempter was Lucifer. Lucifer is not a being that can be seen with our present-day physical eyes. Lucifer can be seen only with the awakened etheric body, with awakened clairvoyance. Seen clairvoyantly, in fact, Lucifer is a particular being who was left behind during the moon phase of evolution. Human beings already possessed the physical body during moon evolution, but it was not physically visible. It was only etherically visible. As far as our head is concerned, what we have today is a reflection of what was already present on the moon. But the rest of our body, which is attached to the head, was not attached to the head then as it is today. It was attached in the form of a spinal column descending from the head. Furthermore, it was serpent-like in form. To represent Lucifer as he was, therefore, one should represent him with a human head with a spinal column attached to it in serpent form. And this is exactly how the painter Master Bertram pictured Lucifer in his Hamburg painting. At the time of Master Bertram, then, human beings still had a perception of the elementary world. The symbols that form the foundation for certain occult brotherhoods also arose, perceived in a living way, in the fourth post-Atlantean period. Goethe realized that this type of symbolism could still be made fruitful for outer life. In Wilhelm Meister you can read how education was conceived so that human beings grew up with a certain type of symbolism. Goethe wanted people to learn about the four types of reverence that human beings can experience through symbols. First there is the reverence for the spiritual world, second the reverence for the physical world, third the reverence for other people, and fourth the reverence that can develop from the three reverences, 
namely the reverence for oneself. How did Goethe want people to develop this reverence of the spiritual? He wanted to teach them certain gestures, crossed arms over the breast with the gaze turned upward. Practicing this position, people can acquire a reverence for the ways the spiritual world can influence human life. Goethe combined this gesture with acquiring the feeling of reverence for what is above. This is significant because when human beings really experience reverence for the spirit, they can do nothing other than express this feeling. If they put their physical hands together behind their backs, then their etheric hands cross in front. If they direct a physical gaze down, glance downward, then their etheric eyes turn upward. The natural gesture for the etheric eyes is to turn up and for the etheric hands to cross in front. This is something that the etheric body actually does when reverence for the spiritual is present. In the fourth post-Atlantean epoch, people still knew this because they were able to perceive the movement of their etheric bodies. Goethe knew that this was the way to grow into spiritual life. He knew, too, that if you wished to develop reverence for the earthly bodily aspect, there was an appropriate gesture for that. And likewise, he knew that to develop the third aspect, reverence for other people, the gesture required was outstretched hands, the gaze directed left and right. He knew that this gesture expressed reverence for other reverential souls and that one might thereafter acquire reverence for one's own soul. Goethe's knowledge of these gestures is correct. It is not something arbitrary, but is connected with the spiritual nature of human beings, which, generally speaking, has been lost since the 14th century. Now, before the 14th century, one could lead people to gestures of this kind and also more complicated gestures. The gestures had only to be accompanied by something that would easily awaken an inner life. In our own fifth post-Atlantean period, the situation is such that quite specific instructions, like those that Goethe knew, must accompany the gestures. In Wilhelm Meister, in fact, Goethe gives such corresponding instructions. However, in the secret brotherhoods, the complicated language of gestures, involving extensive use of sign, grip, and word, is accompanied by such instructions. Therefore, in these groups, since the 14th and 15th centuries, the realities in these gestures could no longer be brought to people. In other words, this process of transmission by gestures, which belonged in that form to the fourth post-Atlantean era, continued into the fifth by means of the brotherhoods. In the three grades, among other symbolic things, the masons have the grip and the word. But from the beginning these were used by souls who were organized differently from those of the earlier periods. Such people could no longer connect anything real with the sign, grip, and word, because they could not rise to what it corresponded to these in the etheric body. The gestures were merely an external aspect, as far as the soul was concerned. Previously, in the age of the intellectual soul, during the fourth post-Atlantean period, there was a possibility of such gestures having a real substantial content. However, when the consciousness soul began to develop, at the beginning of the fifth period, human consciousness began to center upon the physical brain and the sensitivity of the etheric body receded. The consequences are interesting. The occult brotherhoods continue these practices into the fifth post-Atlantean period. They take in people and familiarize them with certain corresponding symbols. People learn certain signs by bringing their bodies into certain positions. They learn certain grips, handshakes, by taking hold of someone's hand in an unusual way. They learn to say certain words that imply a certain activity of the etheric body, and so on. I mention only the elementary aspects. From the 15th century, then, people have learned sign, grip, and word. 
but human beings are now so organized that their center of activity is the consciousness soul. Sign, grip, and word do not work into this consciousness. The gestures remain external signs. But do not think that when sign, grip, and word are transmitted to people, they do not act upon their etheric bodies. They do. Performing sign, grip, and word, a person does take in what was once united with sign, grip, and word. You instruct a number of people in sign, grip, and word. Through that, you bring something into their unconscious that they cannot have in their consciousness. But this appeal to the unconscious is inappropriate for our present evolutionary stage. This requires that one teach by intellect what can be understood by the intellect. You must bring what you teach to the intellect. This actually is the way of spiritual science. First you must stand within the spiritual scientific movement in some way. Then, after a certain time, you can be led to receive sign, grip, and word. In this way you are prepared to see something that you know about, something that one can at least understand. However, as a general rule, this is not done in these occult brotherhoods. People enter the first grade in these occult brotherhoods without being prepared with spiritual science or any other occultism. Sign, grip, word, and many other things are transmitted to them. In this way they can be worked upon unconsciously. The consequence of this is that such people can be adapted to become tools for all sorts of plans. When you can work over the etheric body in such a way that a person does not understand what is going on, you eliminate those forces that would otherwise be present in a person's understanding. Thus, these brotherhoods can become tools for those who want to execute their own plans. The brotherhoods can be used to further certain political goals or to set up a dogma such as Krishnamurti, Alcyon being the physical incarnation of Christ Jesus. Those who are prepared in this way become instruments to carry this sort of thing out into the world. But those, for instance, who have studied my books titled Theosophy or titled Outline of Esoteric Science and understood them can never be damaged by any transmission of symbols. In Britain, for instance, no sort of explanation or instruction is given preceding the symbolic aspect. This lack is widespread there. When I speak of explanation, I do not mean something like, quote, this symbol means this and that symbol means that, close quote. You can give all sorts of nonsense that way. Instruction must be so arranged that the mysteries can be revealed from the study of the whole process of earthly and human development. The symbolism must be allowed to arise out of that. A great deal of damage occurred in France, for instance, through the occult writings of Eliphas Levi, whose books titled Dogma and Ritual of Higher Magic and titled Key to Higher Magic surely contain great truths, but also terrible errors. But these books are not organized in such a way that they can be followed with the intellect, as may be done with our spiritual science. They have to be read symbolically. Just read Eliphas Levi. You can read him without danger because you have been prepared. Read titled Dogma and Ritual of Higher Magic and you will see how the whole methodology of symbolism is different. In fact, if you instruct people with symbols, as is done in this book, then you prepare them so that you can use them in any way you see fit. Actually, after Eliphas Levi, the situation was worse, worsened through Dr. Encausa Papus, or Dr. Encausa, Papus, who had a terrible influence on the court of St. Petersburg, where he played a fateful political role. I'm not sure on this name. There might be an accidental karma, uh, comma there. The name might be Dr. Encausa Papus, I'm going to guess. So Let me read that sentence again. Actually, after Eliphas Levi, the situation worsened through Dr. Encaus Papus, who had a terrible influence on the court of St. Petersburg, where he played a fateful political role. Now, however paradoxical it seems, because there are terrible things there. The task is not to refute Papus, because there is also a great deal that is correct in him. What is dangerous is the way in which these truths are given to people. 
What you find in Pappas's books penetrates into weak souls and puts their intellects to sleep. The result is that you can then use them any way you wish. At the present moment such people indeed have a certain influence. Ellipsis. There are many things you must know. We must know that every occult brotherhood builds itself up on the basis of three grades. In the first grade, when symbolism is used correctly, souls advance to the point that they experience the fact that there is knowledge that can be acquired independently of ordinary physical knowledge. When I say correctly, I obviously mean appropriate to our fifth post-Atlantean period. In the first grade, then, you must be able to acquire a certain body of such knowledge that is independent of the physical. For this, everyone in this first grade ought today to know something of what is contained in my title Outline of Esoteric Science. For the second grade, everyone should know, have inner living knowledge of what is in my book titled How to Know Higher Worlds. Then the person in the third grade who receives the significant symbols of sign, grip, and word, will really know what it means to live outside the body. This is the way the whole procedure should be carried out. Ellipsis. I would like to point out that it is especially significant when pure symbolism is employed in a community that has not arrived at complete maturity, for that is how terrible conditions occur. Under the Empress Catherine of Russia, the followers of Paul and others who tried to transplant certain secret brotherhoods into Russia from the West were also the bearers of a certain kind of Voltairism or Enlightenment thinking that has had a greater influence than you would believe upon the whole spiritual development of Russia since then. Naturally, such influences group themselves in various directions. For example, these influences work in literature through novels and in politics through political writings. However, those influences become very significant for the subsequent development through certain channels that are always present. In fact, everything significant in the spiritual life of Russia, up to Tolstoy, leads in the main back to the implanting of certain occult brotherhoods in Russia from Western Europe. In the occult brotherhoods, then, you have the foundation established through these three initial grades. However, there are people who advance to the so-called higher grades. With regard to these higher grades, we enter a domain subject to a great deal of vanity, because there are brotherhoods in which the people can be brought to the ninetieth degree or higher. Just imagine what it means to carry such a high order within you. The idea of the thirty-third degree, however, results from a mistake springing from complete ignorance of the so-called Scottish high grades, which are based upon three grades that follow in the way I just described. Thus, you have the three grades which have their deep significance. Thirty others follow after these three grades. If you are already in the third grade and you are able to achieve the experience of living outside your body, then just imagine where you will have advanced when you are able to go through thirty more grades. This all rests, however, upon a grotesque ignorance, because people do not know that things are not read in occult science in the decimal system. When you write the thirty-third degree, in reality what that signifies, according to the system of numbering applicable there, that three-three really means three times three equals nine. This played a great role with Blavatsky. In her title, Secret Doctrine, you will find a long debate about the number 777. There are people who have fantasized all sorts of things about what this number 777 means. However, it actually is 7 times 7 equals 49. 49 times 7 is 343. 7 times 7 times 7 equals 343. That is what it really means. Because the people could not read 33 correctly, they read it as a 33 instead of reading it as 9. Let us forget all these vanities and continue. First, you have the three grades as a foundation. Then there are six more after the first three degrees. Once you have passed through these six additional degrees, you have experienced something of great significance. 
However, in our present age, these additional six degrees cannot be completely fulfilled. It cannot be done. They cannot be completely fulfilled because human beings in our fifth post-Atlantean period are not advanced enough to experience all that can actually be experienced. That will come later, gradually. Since 1413 we have been in the fifth post-Atlantean period. This period will last 2,160 years and will end in the year 3573. Hence we are really at the beginning of our period, and in its course a great deal will happen through the development of spiritual science. All this, however, can only reveal itself gradually, step by step. Today I can impart only its great lines. We can learn many details, but a great deal will come only when it has strengthened itself on the resistances, and these resistances will become greater and greater. Today we live in a relatively idealistic spiritual age compared with what will come in the future. We are living at the end of the second post-Christian millennium. It will not be long until we reach the year 2000, when humanity will experience something of a special nature. Things are preparing themselves very gradually right now in a twofold manner. Two poles are emerging that are going to meet as time goes on, one pole from the east and another from the west. In the east there will be a gradual evolution to the point that another kind of thinking will hold sway. Whenever a child is born it will be asked, quote, What can come from this child? In this child we have a hidden spiritual being who wants to develop. Close quote. People will want to solve the riddle of this child and, to begin with, will unite in a kind of cult dealing with the growing up of the child. This is what is being prepared in the East. Naturally, this mood will pass over into Europe and, as a consequence, an immense reverence will develop for what might be called genius. There will be a seeking for genius. This will come from the East but will affect only a smaller portion of humankind. The larger part of humankind will be influenced from the West, from America, and this process will move along an entirely different line of development. We might say that the present time is doing very well compared with what will come in the future as Western development blossoms more and more. Very shortly, when one will have written the year 2000, a kind of prohibition against all thinking, not a direct prohibition, but a sort of law intended to suppress all individual thinking will come from America. A start has already been made in this direction of suppressing individual thinking. We are already seeing a purely materialistic thinking in which there is no need to work on the soul, but only to conduct external experiments in which the human being is treated like a machine. I hope you will not misunderstand me. In this domain, we, on the so-called spiritual side, sin a great deal. For example, someone will come to me and say, quote, I have sought all kinds of medical treatment and I was not healed, so I went to a healer who treated quite spiritually. Close quote. When I ask this person what the healer said, the answer is, quote, There are evil spirits in my body and I must pray them out of myself. Close quote. I ask if this helped, and I am told, quote, No, I became worse and worse. Close quote. Just imagine the situation. But do not just imagine that this person said something wrong. She was quite right to say that there were spiritual beings in her that were the cause of what happened. But the very fact that the healer said something correct damaged the person. Think of it this way. A scamp destroys a machine. He is the cause of the machine no longer running. How can I bring this machine back into proper working order? According to the method of your spiritual healer, I must get hold of this scamp and give him a thorough thrashing, so that he will run away and then everything should be in order. Obviously, the spiritual healer told you that as soon as the evil spirits have gone away, your machine will be in order. However, the machine is not now in order just because the scamp was thrashed and has run away. Now I must work on repairing the machine. And so it is with the person who is sick. 
Of course, the spiritual healer was able to drive the evil spirits out, but the damage had been done, and now the body must be healed. You can see that so much has been sinned against from this side, precisely because today people have lost the ability to think. For example, we have machines today that add and subtract. Everything is convenient. Now, in the future there will be no law passed that says you must not think. What will happen is that things will be invented whose effect will be to exclude all individual thinking. This is the other pole to which we are heading. It is being prepared in the West. We must develop a certain counterweight against this tendency in world evolution. In fact, anthroposophical spiritual science is this counterweight. But what do we have? We have these brotherhoods in which people entering in the first grade are given symbols. Then they are promoted to the second grade, then the third, where they actually learn the symbolic language, but without learning anything spiritual. And if you were to ask these people if they are satisfied with the fact that they have learned ceremonies, hand grips, certain signs and certain symbolic activities that occur in the temple room, they will say, quote, Ah, we are very happy about that. We do not need to do any more thinking. Each person may interpret it as they wish. Close quote. Ellipsis 